All right, hello everybody. This is Jeff Wilson from the Total Body Running Podcast. Today I have my wonderful roommate, Willie Moore, here. We are going to talk about why sprinting is essential to better your distance running. Or should you sprint or should you not sprint? Mm, good topic. Yes, very good topic. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just dive right in. Um, this is episode six. We're rolling. Um, we do not have Zebulon today, just in case anybody was wondering. He is doing a time trial right now as we speak. So, good luck to him. 5,700 feet, mile time trial on the track. Predictions? Ooh. He's coming off a 15.33 5K. That's actually, yeah. I'd see those. 15.33, okay, so he's ran, what did he run at Azusa, or uh, Long Beach? This is a... Four... Um, four, no... No, he, he didn't, didn't run the he didn't run, yeah, He ran a 414-1500 in Pueblo. In Pueblo, which is 409. Yeah, if you go with all these altitude conversions. So if you add, I'm going to say 436. Ah, it's a good guess. I was going to say 37, but I'll, I'll say 435. Nice. Okay. okay. Well, we might, uh, he might be back by the time we finish, so there you go. <laughs> all right. Um, so let's, def- let's define sprinting. Uh, Willie, I'll, I'll ask you first, like, what, what would you, what would you define sprinting as just generally speaking? And then we can, we'll start relating this to distance running. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misconceptions with sprinting. Um, literally I was just on Google before this and just Googled the, like how long can you sprint for? And you get so many different articles, like, oh, one person writes 30 seconds or can you sprint for two minutes? And that is just not true believe and i'm going to give you a range because i don't want to put an exact number to it but about six to eight seconds mm-hmm. is how long you can max sprint for so you probably accelerate for three seconds or so of that yeah um, a, a good sprinter at least would accelerate for about three seconds then be able to yeah. hold on to their max for about three to four seconds and then mm-hmm. decelerate for the last well we're t- now i'm just getting into it if you're running 100 meter race on the track but then you start decelerating so I say about six to eight seconds. It mm-hmm. takes you a few seconds to get to it, three seconds or so, and then you can hold that max sprint for about three to four seconds. Yeah, okay. Starting. That's a great way to describe it. And so that what's actually so people that are listening, I think I think most people think that a sprint lasts all the way up to something around a four hundred meter one yeah. lap around a track. Like I think I like growing up in the sport, we've at least probably joked about this ten times you know, in your own time, whether you were in middle school or even in college, like, you know, you just say, you use the word sprinting. Yes, sometimes it's a joke, but I think, I think honestly, people normally, th- especially when they're looking at somebody that's faster than them, or they see somebody do something amazing, like even the 800, like it's basically, like I've heard people say like, it's oh, this person basically sprinted. Like you look at David Radisha, <laughs> who ran 140. Yeah. What's the world yeah, record? Yeah, 140.91. I remember, I still remember watching that race. Yes, it was incredible. It was unbelievable. That's an, uh, that's, that's a world record. That's average of 50.455 per, right, per 400. Per 400. And I think, I think people look at that as a sprint, which is not physically possible. Even the 400, even if you see, you watch the world record. Yes, it looks amazing because they're good at running, yeah. but you can't physically sprint for that long. And so I think it's, I think it's important to define that because when, when we, when we get to, um, training and like how to implement this, that aspect is actually really important to why it would be good for distance yeah. running because it's not a hot, it's not a lot of volume. Um, do you have anything to add? Yeah. If you're talking about track and field, the hundred meter is the, the shortest oh, outdoor track yes. race. Um, and, and so every hundred meter sprinter decelerates the last mm-hmm. 25 to 40 meters. Yeah, and that's, it's, it's all about who decelerates less at that point. So Usain Bolt ran the world record in 9.58 seconds, and even he was decelerating the last 30, but it looks like he's accelerating because he's right. just gapping the field, especially that last 30 to 40 meters. He's really opening it up. Yes, so, very important. I'm glad you said Usain Bolt because I was thinking that when you first were defining it, and I just, yeah. I forgot to like use the 100 as an example. So yeah, like, like re- hear what he just said. I mean, I, you... Even Usain Bolt was at nine point five. five yeah, I was thinking five nine or something. Yeah, uh, obviously it's a world record. He's literally not accelerating the entire hundred meters. No, 
you know, and so, and the gapping thing is really important. So it's like, we're literally talking about the fastest person ever to live, at least for that race. Mm-hmm. And argue, you, you, argue, just argue. you could argue yeah. based off of his success rates, like stuff that's been analyzed. I think other that's than, a fair claim. If you hold the 100 and 200 meter world records, yeah, track and field, yeah. you're the fastest human. No, there's, no, what, you what can you, always you, make the argument there's some faster person that like for the didn't try or, or yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess if you wanted to, but is it, yeah, outdoor track is the common. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, only thing, I, the only thing I think about for the 60 is because because of the 6 to 8 seconds. It is. Yeah. I don't even, has anybody, has he even ever done 60? I mean, I'm assuming Usain Bolt has. did not run indoor track. I, from my understanding, I don't think he ever did. If not, he just yeah, I don't tried that. it a little bit. But he would just go for outdoor. And a lot yeah. of the best Jamaican sprinters would do that. Well, yeah, that's kind of their sir. At least like Blake, I guess, Powell. Culture. I don't think they would run indoors. Maybe maybe Powell did. Don't call me on that. But so that'd be interesting. Yeah. Maybe some way she'll look up sometime and see like the 60-meter part indoors. of it or something. Yeah. But, but anyway, so it's like there's best best sprinter ever. And he's not accelerating the entire 100. So therefore, he can't sprint. Yeah. I mean, that, it, and 9.59 seconds is the is the record. Yeah, five eight. If if you're decelerating, what the last two seconds, yeah, two and a half two, seconds, two, two to three, I maybe, maybe yeah. three, yeah. So yeah. it's like that, that, like there you go. I mean that that describes it absolutely perfectly. So, how would you add anything to? No, honestly, sprinting. I think we like we looked at since we're looking at the hundred. I mean, I even use the reference of the eight hundred to kind of share that. That's obviously not a sprint. Um, one thing we'll get to later is like the i guess pr- probably naturally we'll get to the differences between body types mm. and such because i think people just think that when you look a certain way then you can sprint versus it being yeah. a physiological thing that's beneficial for your whole body you know like even like from a hormonal perspective just living life you know it, it doesn't you don't even have to be a good runner it's like you should probably learn how to sprint it's kind of a hot take to a degree because it's like why well, why would you want to do that but it's like well yeah. it's powerful if we're talking being healthy it's like i don't you don't have to yep but i don't know i think maybe we can get there later but i think um, i would add one more thing is that as a kid or growing up ooh, especially not being involved in track and field there you're going. you may take off and run what you consider like a full-on full effort, full gas for whatever the amount of time is, like 10, 20, 30 seconds. And that's how some people would define that as like, oh, yes. I just did some sprinting. And it's like, yeah, well, was, of course that sprinting. is, that is sprinting. Cause in that time frame, I'm sure, especially if you're 12 years old, you probably did hit your max and, and right. And at some point during that, that stint. So that is still sprinting. So like, I mean, if you ran, a 20 second interval or something like if we just went out here on the hill and did 20 seconds at all out i mean we'd be decelerating a lot by the end uh, quite a bit or we so could try to like, like maybe say max sprinting yeah so, versus just the idea of what a sprint right what i'm getting is that you is. can do intervals or like unorthodox or just uncategorized intervals especially if you're just a human being just messing around or something that are longer than we'll say the six to eight second window of max sprint, but you can still label that as sprinting. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what a lot of people and maybe Google does because you could build up to it or you could decelerate out of it. So let's say you don't even, you might not even fully realize it, but if it's a 20 second interval and the first eight seconds are not hundred percent building into it. And then there's like six seconds in there that is hundred percent. And then you're decelerating a little bit and you run a really fast 20 second interval. So that's, mm-hmm. I think why some people also just say like, Oh, you're sprinting for 30 seconds or 20 seconds because there's a right. lot of build in and build out of that. So, yeah, that's I think that's a good distinction to make because it's like, like in the idea of sprinting, like I am, I am sprinting. Like, what else would you call it if you were, yeah. like, for your example, like you're a kid and you're running this all, all out to go get a ball or something, or you're playing mm-hmm. tag or something, or trying to catch somebody? It's like, well, you know, what else is it other than just running? I don't know. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense, but, um, all right, so how do we implement sprinting? So this is specifically talking about distance running. Yeah. I would say for today, let's focus on basically any middle distance runner up. Mm-hmm. We're um, talking about pretty competitive high school, college. 
I honestly, I think well, let's let's use those as a as a foundation for like why we're talking about it all, and then we'll rope into people wondering like, hey, I'm just somebody that likes to do road races in town. All the way up to I like to run marathons. I'd say let's add the marathon part of it. Okay. Because that with strength training, those things just because it's a marathon, people just think that they're now a different human. Yep. And all these things just go out the window. <laughs> so um, let's start with the more like, you know, somebody trying to be competitive and <coughs> the, the youthful side of things. I think we should just and assume they're, they're at a decent better. level, yeah. you know, so they're not starting out and they have a nice foundation. You know, they've run some, in their own realms, respectable personal bets. Mm -hmm. um, just because if you're starting with super intro, intro level athletes, then it's it plays out a little different, I think. And right, the amount right. of time and just lack of ability to handle most type of intensities. Um, so yeah, why don't you go ahead and let it first? How would you implement uh, sprint training for for any? Let's let's just talk about I just, you know just take the mic, <laughs> um, <laughs> just let it rip. So yeah, if we're thinking like somebody that's pretty intentional with training, um, I think let's say somebody hasn't really done any type of sprinting other than just being like a kid and playing sports and all that stuff. Um, I would say that an easy way to start is to one, just to try to learn how your, what your body does when you're trying to run close to all out and try not to like jump right into like a max sprint. Um, a big thing like we, we did in our, um, college time, whether it was coaching or, um, as an athlete for, for Willie specifically, we do strides a lot. And that would not be an uh, not be an actual considered sprint, mm -hmm. but it was an easy way to work on mechanics, and you could do it. Really, you could do it every day if you really wanted to. How do you define but strides? Stride. That's a good question. So, I strides I look at it as a couple different ways. One, I would just say like a sub max, um, maybe a sub max sprint or a sub max. Yeah, I would say sub max sprint. Um, if that even makes sense. Is that, is that an oxymoron? <laughs> Technically. Um, and uh, I'd say that one avenue would be all mechanics. So maybe if you're going at like an 80 to 90% kind of speed, then you can work on, uh, work on form at different parts, whether you're trying to do something in the beginning, middle, or end of like 100 or 120 or maybe even 80 meters. And then another one that would just be... Um, really for like maintenance and recovery purposes kind of at the same time. So you're not, you're still, again, you're not sprinting. You're literally just, let's say you just ran eight miles or an hour or whatever, something like that. Um, you did a workout two days ago, maybe you have one tomorrow it kind of keeps, keeps your neuromuscular system a little bit on the snappier end, but you're not doing something so long. So, so high in volume or intensity because you're again, not sprinting to where then it would leave you, anything from sore or just fatigued going into the next day. Okay. Uh, so how would you, uh, oh, sorry. implement sprint training in, you know, collegiate runners, high school runners, post collegiate marathoners. Um, you could start on the bottom of the ladder for certain distances. Yeah. I, I would want to kind of have an approach where you have like somewhere between like maybe like three and five different distances. That you're working at like we'll go back to the strides example and you start at like you know 60 to 80 100 120 okay 150 200 that kind of thing but along the way you'd have both flat and hills i think a good way to start is is through hill sprints because then you can do six to eight seconds pretty high like grade five six seven percent or something like that um as far as the hill goes you know it doesn't have to be exact obviously but just something that will kind of, it'll force you to feel exactly what doesn't feel good when you sprint versus just going on flat, which is everybody, probably where everybody's thinking. And then you could kind of like progress it. Like you could be at the lower end of the actual distance um, and time for both of those. And then kind of slowly progress to where you've touched on all those different distances. Now the hill sprints, I wouldn't say sprinting like 200 meters <laughs> worth of a hill necessarily, but you could kind of do like a more workout version yeah. of that. So you'd probably stop at 12-ish seconds for hill sprints, whereas we could kind of go a little bit higher for your strides. 
where you're doing like 150s, 200s kind of thing. It's just maintenance. Um, and then basically just cyclically go through those throughout the season. So you're constantly working on, um, at some point you're doing max speed Yep. after you've learned how to, like what this actually feels like, how to recover from it well. Um, and so you're constantly through to pretty much what, 11 months out of the year. If you're, if you're somebody that's serious, like you'd be working on that, maybe 12, you could probably argue that where you're constantly cycling through those things, no matter what phase you're in, so that you're never leaving that off the table. Okay. How many times per week? I mean, if we're talking this? like sprinting, I would say just generally speaking, probably once. Okay. But, uh. If we're adding, like, all of these things, honestly, probably three. You know, when you're thinking, like, a couple different distances of strides, maintenance, hill hill sprints, um, I think it'd be easy to add, to have one that's a little bit more workout-focused, which would be the sprint one, in my argument, and then the other two would be more of, like, post, post-run, working on mechanics, whether that's up a hill or not. Um, the last thing I'd say is downhill. I think that can really teach you. Um, a lot about uh, how to decelerate well. Um, I, I think like, for people that have knee issues, I think you can kind of like, it like forces you to like all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, I'm going faster than I normally would. So then you can learn how to run faster and you can get your turno- your leg turnover going faster than of course you would on flat or going up a hill. So I think cycling something downhill like once or twice a month or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 